Sarah Boyack to be followed by Angela Constance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I really want to make just two points in this debate. Uh, first, I'd like to focus on the difference that I believe the Antisocial Behaviour Act has made to constituents of mine who have had to suffer horrendous antisocial behaviour. And secondly, I want to talk about where I think the Act doesn't go far enough and where I think we have a current loophole in relation to party flats and short-term lets in the city. Uh, like others in this chamber, as an MSP, I have had countless numbers of people asking for my help, wanting to know what I can do. And before the Antisocial Behaviour Act came into effect, all I could really do was refer them to the police and hope uh, that the behaviour would be so appalling it, that the police would be there within the 10 minutes to see the behaviour taking place and that the police would accept it was behaviour that actually needed to be challenged and needed to be legally challenged. Um, and as we all know, before the Act, there weren't the powers, there wasn't the ability to actually really get action. And I do believe, along with many colleagues in the Chamber, that prevention is clearly the best option. It clearly is the first option in principle, but it is not a great deal of help to many of my constituents once the actual antisocial behaviour is happening to them and to their family and to their community. And that's the challenge. This isn't a choice. It's not about whether you tackle antisocial behaviour or whether you tackle the deep social uh, problems we've got in society. The challenge is how you do both and not like, let down either set of people. By the time people get in touch with us, they have quite often had not just months but years of harassment, abuse, of intimidating behaviour. And we can't tell them that somebody else is going to sort that out. It's our job, using the legislation and working with our councils and a whole range of agencies to get action. Everybody will have examples of all-night parties through the week, of the disturbance from loud noise from 24-hour lifestyles, from laminated flooring that's been installed, from repeated vandalism, or much, much worse in people's common areas of stairwells, countless stories of harassment and intimidation. And I just don't think we can sit back and let that happen. That kind of behaviour is unacceptable. And I think particularly for individuals, they can't take the action of prevention. Sure, I would always encourage them to engage in mediation, but you can't always get both sides to mediate. And one of the things I've found with the Antisocial Behaviour Act is it can concentrate minds of people who perpetrate behaviour, who they don't always know that they've actually uh, created antisocial behaviour, and sometimes being challenged can actually help resolve it. But for many, many more cases, even being challenged isn't enough, and people need to know there are consequences. And I know that the threat of eviction or an ASBO is very powerful um, and does actually change behaviour. It doesn't automatically change behaviour and it doesn't always do it overnight, but it can concentrate minds and it also sends a message out to people that their experience is something that needs to be addressed. And the comments that Fergus Ewing made, and it's repeated in his document promoting positive outcomes, that we are in this side in favour of si simple, quick fixes, completely misunderstands the experiences of real people. The Antisocial Behaviour Act isn't simple to enact. It isn't a quick uh, piece of action. And it certainly doesn't give you a fix for long term in every case, but it does actually begin to resolve some of the issues. Uh, I can give examples where the police have been involved and we now have privately owned houses being stopped up that were used for drug activities. It took months and years to get those actions, but it did come through the Antisocial Behaviour Act, so it has been very powerful. If it's very brief. I wonder if you'd agree with me that one of, the point is, one of the points was that very often the individuals who were being harassed were not even believed. So establishing the problem was actually a difficult. And that's Boy, partly why it takes months and years. I, I always advise, advise people to keep diaries, to talk to their neighbours. Uh, people send me in petitions where every member in the stairwell, bar the one uh, tenancy who's causing the problem, will write in. Um, and people are not believed. Uh, people are told that the noise they're experiencing isn't that bad. They're told that the intimidation and abuse isn't really happening to them. I have somebody who came to me last week who's experienced mental health, who's had fantastic support from agencies in the city, who is now being intimidated and harassed, not by one, but by two other tenants in the stair that he lives in. I can't tell him that it's not an important issue and I'm not interested, and the other people need to be sorted out first. I have to deal with his issue and make sure that the council lives up 
to its responsibilities, deals with his issue and also provides support for the other people in that stairwell who are causing him a problem. And his, he has been successful in tackling his mental health issues. He's now being set back because he's intimidated and is afraid where he lives in the one place that should be his safe harbour. It should be the place where he can go and shut the door and know he's going to be able to live safely. And he knows that that's not the case. That isn't acceptable. People need support. So I think what we need to do is to focus on that support. The other point I wanted to raise was about short-term party lets. It's a big issue in Edinburgh. Um, I asked Alec Neil about the issue this morning and I was disappointed with his response. There's a current issue where landlords aren't required to register uh, their property with the council. It makes it difficult for antisocial behaviour to be tackled. It makes it difficult for residents to complain to the right person. There's a loophole as well in the HMO licensing process where irresponsible landlords can have short-term lets without being subject to an HMO licence. So you've got overcrowding, you've got bad behaviour, you've got repeated bad behaviour. I had to explain it to a colleague who just frankly didn't believe me that this is happening in countless flats across the city. Just go and Google it on the web. You'll see how many flats are up for rent. And if you talk to the constituents in my constituency, they have a petition up. They need support from us now. They don't need to be told that simple short-term quick fixes aren't what's needed. They do need a fix and they need our support. And we need to look at how the legislation can help them, not say it's irrelevant. Yeah.